I'm Emily. I'm Haley. And this is the Northwest Mystery Show. The world's number one podcast. In the Northwest. In the world. Are you sure? I think that's a little presumptuous. We're number one on iTunes. In the future. <laughs> in a hundred years. In a, in a different reality. <laughs> Not in this reality, but... No, but... We are number one on my personal Stitcher. <laughs> yay! Oh, yay! We're number one in our hearts. Yeah. That's where it matters. That's all that matters. I don't know. <laughs> Does it... Oh, should we talk about this podcast? Um... What we... What's on it? Uh, we talk about mysteries in the Northwest. <laughs> Very self-explanatory. Um, we talk about not mysteries, too. Yes. Um, we talk about serial killers and cults and goats. Ghost towns. And ghost towns. Bigfoot. And buried treasure. Buried treasure. Treasure. Potentially treasure. buried treasure. Aliens. Um conspiracy theories. Uh f- spooky phenomenons. Scooby Doo. Oh, always Scooby Doo. We talk Scooby-Doo. about Scooby Doo a lot. <laughs> uh, the thing you're doing today, your story is very Scooby Doo. It, it is. I'm I, here for it. Yeah, I think there's like an episode of the Scooby Doo and Scrappy Show where they go to some place similar like this. I think you're right. I think. Was it the Scooby Doo yeah. and Scrappy Show? Yeah. I thought it was Scooby Doo and Scrappy too. I don't know what it's called, but Scrappy's in it. But Scrappy's in it. Oh, I fucking love Scrappy. I like Scooby Dumb. <laughs> no, he's awful. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I don't You're wrong. <laughs> well, there's also Scooby D. I don't understand the Scooby family. family. Yeah. Man, there's a lot of Scoobies. I, are they all cousins? Because, like, the one's an actress. Scooby D is an actress, apparently. She's like the air bud of her day. <laughs> we need to look into, like, the genealogy of, of Scooby Doo. Yeah. Yeah. Chase well, it back. Ancestry.com, that shit. Yeah. Oh, maybe. <laughs> I bet there's got to be a fucking website that, like, has it all family tree laid out, you know? Yeah, and, like, where Shaggy comes into play, or, like, even Shaggy's family tree, because they see his family a lot. Oh, my fucking God. Oh, it does. <laughs> this exists. Yankee Doodle Doo? What, what the fuck? I don't remember. Is Granddad Do? I think I remember him. Where are these from episodes, or? I guess. D- they're just from everything. Skippy Doo, Ruby Doo, oh, probably some obnoxious jerk dog, and then Scrappy. Because <laughs> we don't know who Scrappy's dad is, but no. he's a little shit. Yeah, cousins of unknown origin. Doobie, why Whoopsie? is his name Doobie? Horton hears what? Oh, so Scooby's got like a bunch of brothers. I guess. Yeah, but do. And he's whoopsie and dixie are like do. redneck yeah yeah they do and howdy doers redneck as well what what's that what's that one plus the leg do you see that yeah yeah horton know. here's a do humped a leg and then no came the cousins dixie no. and whoopsie who oh, fucking God. made this i don't know it's kind of funny okay okay that's more than i needed to know wow that was a lot of info that was if you guys google scooby-doo family tree you can there's a few there's a lot of a lot of stuff there <laughs> it's oh, something man. i so basically i still don't know how scrappy doo is related <laughs> uh, he's his nephew is it ruby doo is his sister and, and scrappy doo is ruby doo's son and then it's an obnoxious jerk of a dog <laughs> is his dad apparently <laughs> accurate <laughs> yeah he probably died trying to fight someone. That sounds right. Yeah. Because Scooby, or Scrappy's is always trying to, like, box people. Yeah, he's always ready to fight. Because he stands on two legs. <laughs> yeah. Which is weird. Because Scooby and Scooby Dumb are on four legs, and he's always on two. And why is Scrappy, like, a fucking midget? He's like an, you know how, like, sometimes little people are, like, really aggressive? <laughs> you know? <laughs> They try to like fight you. Send your complaint emails to <laughs> Northwest Mystery Show at gmail.com. I, this is, I'm not saying it's true. I'm just saying this is like a stereotype. Okay, well, you're like, what, five foot? Do you want to fight everyone? I want to fight everyone. Okay. And I can't because I get my ass beat. Yeah. 
that you makes can't sense. fight anyone either no i can't but i don't want to fight anyone because i'm like average height i've got so. a lot of aggression <laughs> and it's all because you're only five foot it's literally all because of that <laughs> that makes sense though i mean you always have to have a stool to get anything out of a cupboard like okay i get it <laughs> fuck off <laughs> You're going to quit this podcast now, aren't you? I'll tell you what. <laughs> so close. <laughs> if I grew a fucking foot, I'd just go be a model because I only weigh like 90 pounds. So There you go. I, I'm salty because I'm a foot away you're, from you're my... You're too short to be a model. I'm a foot away from like my dream career. Of being a model. Yeah. You're 10 inches. Ten, 10 inches. Yeah. Let's not exaggerate. <laughs> Let's not get into hyperbole here. So, that's all we do on this show. <laughs> that's my entire life. It's over exaggeration. <laughs> And every melodrama. every story you tell is it like do you exaggerate the facts and people are like was it really five years and you're like no it was like a couple days ago but yeah no sometimes you know. i'm like oh last week and i'm like no wait that was like two years ago never yeah, mind but, and people are like well your story doesn't really check out i'm like the facts are not concrete Listen. i'm just throwing shit out yeah like, i was there physically but not mentally so i don't know i'm just making it up as i go I feel like it doesn't have to be exact it, they just have to listen to my story <laughs> yeah like it's all there it doesn't matter uh, disclaimer though the stories that we tell on this show the mysteries are rooted in fact <laughs> they're straight facts got them off several websites in google so and wikipedia research heavily and not just thrown out of the top of your head yeah heavily researched copied and pasted oh uh, really i typed in my own words oh i was cause... doing that for a while and well today it was a lot of copy paste but... oh. laziness oh <laughs> <laughs> She's I mean, on, she's only 90 pounds. She doesn't have a lot of energy. <laughs> I'm so tired. <laughs> Me too. It's okay. We're doing our best here. We really are. We're doing our best to bring you guys mysteries. Yes. Should we tell them where they can find mysteries? Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's do our shout outs. So Instagram page, right? Instagram page is just a disclaimer. If anything is Northwest, we just shortened it to NW. Because like we said, we're lazy. And it's way quicker to North type. Northwest is a long word. I know. <laughs> We're saving you guys some work. <laughs> so, uh, Instagram is at Northwest Mystery Show. That's Check it. it out. We post yeah. uh, pictures from every episode. Mm -hmm. And we, we make our own memes. We do. We make our own memes. We post about books we're reading apparently yeah like true crime books if yeah. it, there's anything like exciting happening in the world we'll post about we'll post that. about it if we're feeling lonely maybe we'll post <laughs> just like pictures of you in your bedroom like yeah me drinking and, my and crying with my cat <laughs> yeah why not yeah it's interesting it's content it's mysterious <laughs> it is pretty mysterious and it's happening in the northwest because i live in the northwest <laughs> so i mean why you're, not? you're not wrong but <laughs> It's, it's very on theme. We also have an email where email. you can send us mysteries. Please. Please do. Please. Please, please. Every person I talk to is like, oh, I don't have a story. And then I talk to them some more and they tell me these amazing fucking stories. No, yeah, I feel like everyone has a story, but no one wants to email it because... Do, did they forget did email just stop in like 2010 and everyone has just forgotten how I'm to like, email i know you motherfuckers have an email <laughs> i know you know how to use it at least you have like an aol email that you use for like spam like yeah. when you go to a store and like they, they harass you for your email yeah you i'm like i know someone's you emailing you yeah you know so it's not that hard email us please and send us mysteries or murders or ghost stories yeah if you've got a, like a personal story that happens in the northwest something you experienced it doesn't yeah. matter if it's a mystery it can be anything weird just send it in yeah if it isn't like 100 percent real but you don't know <laughs> but it could be real still send it could it. be something that someone in your family like told you like a family legend or whatever yeah what's that email one more time it northwest. is northwest mystery show at gmail.com nw mystery show at yes. gmail.com yeah nw mystery show on instagram and you can find us on facebook facebook NW page. mystery show exactly we've got all the social media we're al also on the uh, stitcher app yes so you can go on there and download that app Check and listen to the out. podcast yeah and we always have links in our bios where you can listen to us yeah, because we, we want everything. you to listen to us. We're gonna harass you. 
we're eventually going to get on more platforms at some point. We're working yeah. on that. Um, but yeah, we, we're we like pretty active on social media. So follow mm-hmm. us and we post lots of funny shit, I think. I think it's funny. We make our own memes, so I mean. I'm pretty proud of that. Yeah. Did you see my screaming onion one? <laughs> cabbage or onion? Yeah, so, sorry screaming cabbage yeah i yeah. saw the cabbage that was oh pretty good my God. it's like so crudely photoshopped <laughs> i don't know how to use photoshop so it, it's pretty good it took me about like 30 seconds <laughs> it was way better than either of us could have done yeah people really liked it the db cooper one that i made that's literally just a powerpoint slide <laughs> oh my god people like that one too so good yeah i still think the ted bundy creeper one is my favorite oh that took me more work than I'm comfortable admitting. <laughs> it's so good. And nobody liked it. Like five people. <gasps> what? <laughs> repost it. Repost it now. Do it. I'll just keep posting it like every day. Yeah. <laughs> you get more than five likes. Yes. Good. We'll just keep reusing the same memes. We have three and we'll keep reusing them. Instagram's kind of like my baby. Uh, like every day I'm on there doing shit to like get more followers. Oh, we're up to like. 160 so do you think we have any bots yet probably not no i think they're all real people i think that's the goal of the podcast is to get bots to follow us on instagram my goal is <laughs> right now is to get us to like a thousand followers that's yeah. so many you know most of our followers are other people who have podcasts yeah oh i noticed that i saw that i found some really yeah. good ones on there i'm like oh i might go listen to that you are going to go listen to that you yeah. should see that just in case they listen hey we're, we're listening to you and your show <laughs> we really enjoy it whatever it is all of them yeah every single one most of them are like two girls doing a podcast about creepy shit good and so i'm like that's what we're doing yeah. we gotta support you that's our demographic yeah yeah just two girls who like really weird stuff i guess that's more common than we thought <laughs> yeah i guess we're not really that original <laughs> we're just one of hundreds of but it's like we're in like a weird little like niche you know it's northwest i i feel like ours is specific because it's one small area most of mm-hmm. these people their podcasts are so broad i'm like yeah how in the world do you even do know. research for that so many options though yeah if you guys want to do that and you want to start a second podcast you could call it broad broads broad broad. <laughs> <laughs> i mean copyright that yeah <laughs> copyright that and brunch drunk brunch drunk brunch is my drunk. favorite of yeah. all time <laughs> One i'm day. pretty proud of that I one actually brunch drunk oh that needs to happen we're, we have we're gonna do that because we love brunch <laughs> I, just, I like brunch and i like getting drunk so yeah, two good things we just need to get like some sort of sponsorship from uber so you can yeah so we can get home yeah dude uber or lyft either one nobody wants to pay for uber so if we could get it for free yeah mm. listen we'll get really drunk in your uber and we'll give you a really good ad because we'll both be really drunk <laughs> Well, what if we got, like, what if brunch drunk got so big that we could go to these brunch places and not have to pay? And not have to, not pay. to pay the $9 for your meal? <laughs> not have amazing. to pay for bottomless mimosas? Yeah. That would be great. Oh That's my the gosh. dream. That is the dream. Yeah. We could be, like, brunch food critics. Just, hold on. Are you recording us? Yeah, you're on Facebook Live right now. No. Oh, my God. Are we really? Yeah. Fuck off. <laughs> Preview to the show. Oh, how long are you going to do that? I can be done. I'm, <laughs> I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Say hi to Facebook. Hi, hi Facebook. Facebook. Bye, Facebook. Shout out to all our Facebook followers. Later yeah. days. Bitch. Comment comment on shit. Email us your stories. Or we'll keep harassing you. Yeah. We'll start emailing you guys. <laughs> I posted again today. I'm like, send us your fucking stories. Then, oh, we'll just do like an email tutorial. Here's how you send an email. Let's do Step that. Step one, honestly. You open <laughs> Gmail. Step two, you hit compose. People are like, I don't really want an email. I've had people tell me that. I don't want you to be such a whiny bitch. How about oh. that? <laughs> <laughs> Man, last week we were like shit talking hated, and now we're just <laughs> calling out everyone. Like, <laughs> listen, I haven't got a lot of sleep. So, <laughs> Haley was partying last night. Oh, I was. Uh, hard cider and board games. Uh, it was yeah. not just board games. Any games. It was just cider and games. It's my life. No, it was actually, it was really fun. I am terrible at drawing. <laughs> I love parties that are just like drinking just, and games. Yeah, that's yeah. the best. 
I've been to quite a few of those. And then we just watched a movie and we made fun of the movie. Did and you it see was the pile great. of games we have on the uh, table downstairs? So we've been to that a bit lately. We remember that the Halloween party we had here where we did that like drawing game and everyone was fucking drunk. Yeah. <laughs> is it Telestration? Yeah. Or Pictionary? Yeah. Great. I think it was Telestration. Anything involving drawing is immediately hard. Grayson was in drag and he was sitting on my lap <laughs> like the whole night. Mm. It was weird. <laughs> it was that kind of party. Oh. And that kind of party. <laughs> Should we get into our into our first story yeah are you ready i'm absolutely ready okay i couldn't really think of a good title so i just titled it the lighthouses of death (laughs) what the fuck (laughs) because there's some ghosts and there's some lighthouses so a 10 point for that title of death so the first one um so i did two because one just didn't seem like enough so i did two and the first one is the tillamook rock lighthouse which is the one that you said looked like a shoe. The rock it's on looks like a shoe. It doesn't look like a shoe. But just in the looks, from that angle, it totally looks like a shoe. In the Wikipedia picture, it does. What type of a shoe? Like a sneaker. The kind you put your foot into? Oh, there's different types. There's like boots, there's sandals. It doesn't look like a fucking boots, sandal. Boots aren't shoes. Shoes are shoes. Boots are shoes. They're no, a type of boots. shoe. Boots are boots. We're going to fight. Ugh, we're going to fight over <laughs> shoe types. Who's the fashion major here? Um, Who's... Wearing some kids. I'm wearing my knockoff toms. <laughs> my like ten dollar toms. That's better than sixty. True. Yeah, I have some so toms true. that I've had for so long and my mom's like, you need to throw those away. I'm like, no. They start stinking really bad after oh, a while. They do. You can wash them, but that just makes them smell worse. It really does. Yeah, it doesn't help at all. My sister owned some and it was the grossest thing I've ever smelled. Yeah, no thanks. Okay, so another name for the Tillamook Rock Lighthouse is Terrible Tilly, but I hate that name. That's so stupid. Yeah. So... We're um, vetoing that. Yeah, no thanks. Uh, But they decided to build the lighthouse on a rock because they, well, they needed light and like the Tillamook Bay or whatever was so far back that it couldn't be reached. So they decided to build it on like this giant basalt rock and it began... Um, in 1879, and one of the first surveyors to go out there was John, I should have practiced how to pronounce his last name, but it's like Trey Wavis, Trey Wavis, Trevavis, I don't know. Um, but the only way to get from the boat he was on to the rock was to jump. So he did, but what? this wave like came up and he slipped and he was swept out into sea and they like never found his body again. Oh, shit. So that was the first death associated with this lighthouse. Um, And there was, like, this Native American legend surrounding the rock where the spirits could build tunnels in the ocean and then they appeared on the rock. So already things are kind of weird and shady. And the locals were really against the construction of the lighthouse for some reason. And whenever, like, construction workers would come into town, they would always scare them away. This is off the Oregon coast? uh like northern yeah in the i should have checked yeah the, i just a assumed picture do you know where it was it's like northern corner yeah of oregon okay uh it's visible from coastal cities of seaside cannon beach and ecola state park okay so um so charles ballantine was the guy who replaced the john who got swept out into sea and he kept the workers in the Cape Disappointment Keeper's Cabin so they wouldn't interact with the townspeople and get scared away. Yeah. It's already getting spooky. Yeah, it's already kind of sketchy. Um, so immediately, once the construction crews went out to the lighthouse, problems began. There was a storm and a bunch of their stuff got like lost at sea. And they had no boat to get them back to land so they were stranded and they were attacked by like sea lions and birds and stuff is this an episode of i survived it could be from like the 1800s yes this is the original i survived let's do it like a reenactment <laughs> yeah just them just go getting out to the columbia river and do a reenactment how are we gonna get like the sea lions to attack on command uh i don't know C- cover cgi CGI, yeah. there we go. We'll just put my cat in a sea lion outfit. She'll attack. DIY. Yeah. We'll just make one. You can sew. You can make one. Oh, God. Uh, so it took 224 days to level that rock 
to make it look like a shoe to get the lighthouse there. They were doing it by hand. This was all like hand work with like waves and wind and you're getting attacked by sea lions and birds. Like this is a lot of fucking work. Like just build it on the But they shore. can't because you can't see it. They needed it on the rock. Um so three weeks before the lighthouse was set to open, a ship called the Lupatia was sailing close to shore and there was a really thick fog and they crashed. And all 60 of the crew washed up on the rocks dead and, like, the wreckage of the ship was never found. That's some ghost shit. Yeah. So oh that's God. recipe for ghosts, right? This is how you get ghosts. Yeah, this is exactly how you get ghosts. Do you want ghosts? Because this is how you get ghosts. I don't know if I want ghosts. Like, I'm not afraid of ghosts, but I just, they seem like a nuisance. Like, they don't pay rent. They don't help out with chores. They don't do laundry. They don't cook. Like, what's the point? I, that was an archer joke that you didn't get. <laughs> I know. This is how you get ants. Okay. You get yeah. It, okay. I know. I was just, I have my own tangent about ghosts. I have strong feelings, Emily. Because they're fucking freeloaders. They are. Like babies and small have children. Have you seen that? I think it's for like an insurance company. There's like this commercial and this lady moves into this house and there's like these ghost children. What? <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't remember. I think I'll find it and send it to you. I yeah, think it's like a Geico commercial. Yeah. Send me that. We'll post it on Facebook. Uh, yeah, we will. So the lighthouse was built in 575 days. God, that seems like a long... That's that's like almost, almost two, two years. years. Yeah, that's a long time. Um, and once it was built, no one wanted to go out and like live and like take care of it. Because once you were out there, you were out there for months. Yeah. And it was kind of like seen as punishment from the Coast Guard. So if you like stepped down a line, they just sent you out there. Oh my God. Um, so four men could live in the keeper's quarters, but they couldn't bring like their like wives or their family or anything. So it's just four guys living it up in a lighthouse. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Good times. <laughs> um, so the lighthouse keepers reported hearing like bone chilling moans once they were going up the stairs to get to like the lantern. You saw those fucking people that died that and died. washed up on they the coast. They were crying for help. Like, why didn't you open three weeks sooner? This is horrifying. Yeah. Um, so there's a story, and I don't think it's true, but one of, like, the lighthouse keepers was so attached to the house that he was, like, driven to madness once they were like, it's time to leave, and they had to, like, take him out in a straitjacket. I hope that's true. It's kind of, like, shining type yeah. stuff. Like, you're just going to go insane because you're there for too long. It's just you and your thoughts. Oh, it's almost like, you know, when you're in space too long, you go crazy because you're all alone. Yeah. Like, it's there's the same like, thing. There's no internet back then. You couldn't, like... You're trapped alone on this rock. Yeah, you couldn't... In the middle of hide nothing. Hide sadness with cat memes and videos. Like, it was just you and your thoughts. What do you think they did for fun on that rock? Like... <sighs> do you think they read? They had books back then, oh. so maybe they read. And jerked off. <laughs> and wrote in journals they read books and they jerked it and that's about it yeah that's all there was to do i tried to befriend sea lions i don't know i bet they like created their own friends out of items that washed ashore <laughs> kind of like tom hanks in that one movie and, uh castaway yeah, yeah. him and wilson <laughs> yeah were you gonna what say to say he was wilson okay wilson uh so the lighthouse operated for 77 years and then it was decommissioned in 1957. But this is the best part. This is my favorite part. So in 1980, the lighthouse became a columbarium, which is where they keep urns with human <gasps> remains. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. But they were only there for like not even 20 years in 1999 the oregon mortuary and cemetery board took away the license because they didn't have proper urn storage because they weren't stored in like little like cubbies they're just like stacking urns <laughs> yeah and there is also like improper record keeping but there is like 30 urns still in the lighthouse that's creepy oh so this yeah. is this is how you get ghosts the, exactly this is exactly how you get ghosts. This place is haunted as fuck. Yeah, but the only way to reach the rock is by helicopter. So you can't go out there. So it's decommissioned so you no one can like go there. No. Okay. No one can go there. But if you look at pictures now, it's so creepy and it's all like rusty and it's just it has not been kept up because of the birds. They just kind of let the birds go crazy. Oh god. See, look at that. 
that, that, that looks like it holds human it remains. It looks like someplace you would send someone after you, they try to destroy the world, you know? And they're yeah. like... They're just crazy. Crazy prisoner. Yeah. Like... That's where you send them. Yeah, exactly. That's worse than Alcatraz. They call it mini Alcatraz. Oh, of course they do. Yeah. Oh, my God. Look at that. That's a prison on a rock. Yep. Yeah, no thanks. Would not vacation there, TBH. <laughs> Mm-mm. I mean, I still want to see it, but I, I, I want to, like, it'd be cool to take a boat out and get close to it, you know? The winds are so strong out Ugh. there, though. Yeah. yeah. No thanks. Not trying to die today. Maybe tomorrow, but not today. Not today. No, not today. So the second lighthouse. I really like that first one. Are yeah, you, are you I gonna top too. it? Like, <laughs> um, I don't know if it tops it, but the story is a little bit more dramatic. So we love that melodrama. So uh, all about melodrama. Yes. So Yaquina, not Yakina, like I thought. Pronunciation up for debate. Send us your send thoughts. us the correct. Get ang- get angry about it and send us a yeah. rant. So Yaquina Bay Lighthouse is in Newport, Oregon. It was only operational for three years before it was decommissioned and replaced with Yaquina, or sorry, Yaquina Head Lighthouse. That's which, a bigger one. Yeah, which I've been to Yaquina Head. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty cool. If you have pictures, we'll post oh, them. Oh, I I've do. I've been to both of them. Oh, man. Oh, I've never been to this, yeah. Send me all your pictures and we'll yeah, post yeah. them. I'll send you my photos. Okay. Um, so, this story, there's a couple stories where... I've read, I read, like, different versions of them, and they're all different. Continue. Okay, sorry. Um, so, the first version of the story is, in 1874, the crew of a whaling ship called the Moncton, which is a weird name, went mutinous and sent the captain adrift to shore, and he was eventually found on land with a red beard and a skeleton face. And then he went into town moaning and looking for a place to stay and someone to share death with. Were you listening to me? Share death with. Share death with, yeah. Mm, That's one way to put that. Yeah. I was uh, showing her a picture of inside the house where they have these art Uh made out of human hair. Oh, why? Because that's what they had to work with. All right, okay. That's a choice. <laughs> that's that's a strong choice. I um, mean, it's it's this close to the bridge. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. It's right at the mouth. Yeah. Um. So he ended up at the lighthouse, which had been decommissioned, and that's like the end of the story. Um. But then this other version, uh, the captain has a name, and it's Evan McClearer, and a ship struck the storm, and it ended up in the Devil's Punch Bowl. And wrecked, and then people saw the captain at the lighthouse. Like, after the Yeah, wreck? so both are kind of dramatic and not really <laughs> filled out with a lot of details. Not a lot of facts there, but we're here for the story, not the yeah. facts. Um, and then, I don't, 1874 was a big year for this lighthouse, apparently. Because the second story that's often associated with it is also, like, every time you read it, the details are different. So this one is about a girl named Muriel or Zena, depending on which version you're reading. And she was left at a hotel by her dad who was out at sea and he was like going to come back for her. So she went with some friends to the lighthouse to have a picnic because that's what she did back then. I would fucking do that. (laughs) Yeah, why not? Should we go have a picnic at a lighthouse? Maybe. That That sounds fun. Yeah, that'd be great. Oh my gosh. Uh, This particular one is open every day. They do tours. <gasps> yeah. Haley, let's go. Have we you done the to. tour? No. <gasps> we need to. Road trip. We're yes, going. We can do it. The, the weather's getting so nice. I know. It's almost summer. We can do it. Let's fucking do it. Let's do it. We can go to the Wax Museum. We can go to Ripley's Believe It or Not. Um, we'll do. Yeah. Honestly, like the the one I'm going to talk about next, mm-hmm. we should go there as well. It's like Southern Oregon, but we can. We can do it. We'll take that trip. Yeah, it's fine. I think the fun part about this podcast is we, we can, can go, go to all of these places. Yeah, we need to. We need to like yeah. make a list. Yeah, and we'll go this summer. Oh god, I want to go to so many of them. I know, me too. I feel like we're discovering things that we didn't know about before. No, I had no idea about so many of these things. Yeah, so many things happen here during the day. We can go explore, and then at night we can stay, but we'll stay in haunted hotels. Yes, exclusively. Yes, we can bring 
my GoPro that I borrowed from my dad. Fuck yeah. Yes. Uh, I'll learn how to use it. Northwest Mystery Road Trip. Yeah. New show. There we go. We'll post it to like it's Instagram. spin off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll be YouTubers. Honestly, we should we set should. up a YouTube. And we should. Yeah. yeah. We, we okay. will. We will. Details to work out after I finish my story because I lost my spot already. Okay. So they were picnicking at picnic <laughs> words are hard yeah, <laughs> yogi bear yogi bear wasn't there have a picnic? <laughs> or was he uh he could have been there was probably bears there back then oh, I, sure. I imagine bears have been around for a while i heard so a couple hundred years yeah you, you yeah. don't say who knows uh so once they were at the lighthouse they were like oh let's go in because why not yeah, yeah. why not and on the third floor, they found a secret room. How the fuck do you just find it. a secret room? I asked Muriel slash Zena. I don't know. Why Why can't we find secret rooms? Have we looked for secret rooms? I think we should start. Do you have a secret room? Uh, not in this particular place, no. Okay. Well, we You've tried. been to my dad's. Have you seen all his yeah. weird little like closets yeah, and no stuff? Pay no attention to the door behind the mattress. Oh, hey. There's, there's a, a secret, secret room. room. Not a secret room. <laughs> Or is it? Or, closet. or is it? That's secret. Secret really. closet? Secret closet? It's a, it's a known closet. Secret window? <laughs> that Johnny Depp movie? What? Isn't that a Johnny Depp movie? There's like a secret window. The bitch, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I know he made the ninth gate. Yeah. It was bad. I like that. Yeah, mm. I think they ran out of funding. That had to be the answer because it wasn't bad. Until it's such it was a bad. It's a good concept and then it just wasn't executed that well. Yeah. Have you seen the. There's a different version of that starring Norman Reedus. No. What? I'll have to check that out. Um, it's called Cigarette Burns. What? Mm, I think gross. it's it's by John Carpenter. And it's, you know how The Ninth Gate's about like a book? Yeah. Uh, this one's about like a film that uh, like Norman Reedus discovers and it, everybody who watches it goes crazy and like kills themselves. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, uh, okay. Like The Ring. It's fucking good. I own it. So I'll, okay. we'll have a movie night. Yeah, yes, we will. It's like a short film it's not like a full film either short films are the best because they're short because yeah i don't have the attention span for anything over like an hour and a half we can't commit to anything no really can't i'm in a relationship so i shouldn't say that <laughs> except a relationship he's gonna leave me he doesn't listen to he this it's okay, to show. It's, okay. <laughs> it's fine he's never gonna know love you <laughs> he, he won't hear that um damn so after they're done investigating they go outside and then muriel slash Zena discovers she left her handkerchief so she goes back inside like buy a new one bitch no who carries handkerchiefs and then just drops them don't go back alone she goes back alone okay and then after a few minutes her friends hear a scream they run back inside to find her and they only find drops of blood leading to the third floor and her bloody handkerchief. Yeah, Muriel slash Zena was never seen again, but people think that her spirit roams the halls. Is this true? Well, here we mm, go. Maybe. So, um, in 1899, there was a story published in a fictional magazine, very similar. It's about a girl who was left by her father, who was out at sea, and he was like, gonna come get her in like two weeks or whatever. So then she joins this group of tourists because she's like alone and they go and explore the lighthouse and they find secret doors that lead to a secret tunnel that leads to the ocean. Bitch, this is what I'm here for. Yeah. There's there's secret tunnels. These are for real. No, this was a fictional story oh, that okay. someone wrote about this lighthouse. No. So they find the secret tunnel and then they leave, and once they get outside, Muriel, who, that's her name in this story, realizes she left her handkerchief, and then she goes back and gets it. So do you think this the legend is based on this story? It, yeah, it is. Okay. And or is the story based on... Mm-hmm. Yeah. What so, happened? So who knows? Um, so she goes back in alone to find her handkerchief again, and then the tourists hear a scream. They go back in. They find her, uh, like, pool of blood on the floor outside the door. But to this day... So the story... Um, was printed like on like paper placemats at like these tourist traps like all over mm -hmm. and since it was a fictional magazine and those don't really exist anymore in this day and age people assume that it's true okay and so like okay. they'll go and they'll do the tour of the lighthouse and they'll ask to see muriel's bloodstain 
I mean, if I okay, but if I go to the tour, I want to see the blood stains. So. Yeah, who knows? Um, so in 1975, a hitchhiker came through town. He was looking for work. He had no money, no place to stay, so he slept in the lighthouse. Um, and that night, a ghostly woman appeared outside his window, telling him that he would find work the next day. And then in all caps, I wrote, and he fucking did. <laughs> Did he? I don't know. That was the end of that story. Oh, you don't know? <laughs> you just yeah, said I don't he know. did. <laughs> Maybe he did. That's I, just part of the story. I believe he did. Yeah, he did. So that's the Yaquina Bay Lighthouse. So, so it's all up in the air, all open for interpretation. People claim to like hear things and feel things. Other people say they don't. But maybe they're just close-minded. It's like any place that's supposedly haunted. You know, there's like legends. People have experiences or they don't yeah i feel like some people want so badly to have experiences that going in they're like they tell themselves that they're gonna have them and then they like freak themselves out so even if it's a normal thing like oh there's like a cool breeze all of a sudden they're like oh it's a ghost i felt the cold hand of a ghost yeah and and you're like "Mm, did you a ghost brushed by me (laughs) Uh, i like i heard a scream in the distance well that could have been a small child they scream a lot fucking anything yeah like, especially there there's a lot of people there yeah, yeah. Uh, so i went there maybe four years ago it was pretty neat so it was um uh like you said decommissioned in the mm-hmm. 1800s but it was uh it's now it's re what do you call it refurbished re uh, is it re-opened? remodeled re- remodeled it was not really remodeled but yeah no they they fix it up they running tours through there renovated so, renovated there, there you we go. go um they sell swag in the basement it's pretty cool um and it's really neat they got everything like a lot of your uh museums like that they got everything roped off and they have some mm-hmm. really old stuff um we'll get some pictures up there because i do have some handy but like they have like the original stove like I said, the creepy hair. That is so creepy. Uh, piano that was there. Oh, oh God. Wait, did you say uh, to a piano? It, it all looks creepy. It's all, anything old is creepy, okay? I, I think it's creepy because if it's super old, I assume there's like a spirit attached yeah, to it. Yeah, there has to be something. I'm like, oh, the haunting's coming from that piano. Like a ghost is Get playing that. The piano. Huh. A ghost is playing that piano at night. You know. Maybe. Maybe it's, I mean, we'll spend not, the night. Certainly. It's definitely yeah, happening. Yeah, they, they close. I you know. Can't. Yeah. Good luck. You could sneak in and get arrested. We could. That's the goal. Yeah. It's never get, been arrested, get arrested before. So. Get arrested for this podcast. Yeah. We went to jail for you guys. <laughs> That's how committed we are. Yeah. <laughs> then we'll try to podcast from jail. I would like to sneak into somewhere. Like, there's a lot of... um abandoned you know like mental health facilities there's a lot around we should break into one of those come on but we won't tell people about it Mm. (laughs) well we'll record it in some way for this podcast yeah we'll tell you guys and no one else we'll wait till like do they have a statute of limitations for that for breaking and entering and then we'll just wait till it runs out (laughs) right i don't know (laughs) we're we're gonna do it we'll do it We'll figure it out. Yeah. I know, like, one of my friends, she said she used to, in the 90s, she used to, like, have, like, go to parties and raves at some of these, like, abandoned places. Abandoned warehouses, for sure. Abandoned, like, mental health places. Oh. Yeah. They used to party there. Oh. I'm like, that's a fucking story. How'd they get power? Send that shit in. Yeah. No, they were just, like, outside, like, lighting bonfires and shit, you know? Oh. Raves would you would think there'd be lots of strike like I, I, by rave I think I mean it was there's just like music and people were doing drugs but they were just like okay. standing around sounds like a good time <laughs> interesting we don't go to raves we're not ravers I know I don't think I have the energy or like the will I don't like doing drugs that much so yeah doing like acid with a bunch of strobe lights doesn't seem like a good time yeah, I feel I think, like I would I die think MDMA would be your drug of choice at a rave. You have told me that, but I I don't think so. I don't know. Yeah, I'm telling you that's what people do at raves. I, no, I know they do it at raves. I just don't think oh. it's I should do it. Then don't. I think I'd have a bad time. Definitely not. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe we'll go to a rave on this podcast. <laughs> a haunted rave. A haunted rave. A rave full of serial yeah, how about How about we go uh. to the rave, but we just wear like ghost costumes? Like, yes. Just drape a sheet over us? Yes. That would be great. That'd be so disorienting on drugs. Oh, it really would. We won't be on drugs, but everyone else will be. 
difficult. Some people will be. Not everyone does drugs there. Well, maybe everyone does. Some people are stereotype people. Some people are just high on life, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know how that works. (laughs) Life isn't that great. Come on. Definitely not me. (laughs) Not me. No. That's why I drink a lot. (laughs) Oh, should I tell my story now? Um, maybe. Mm. Do you want to do some plugs first? We already did. Do uh, we plugged all our social could, media. What about uh, other people? Yeah, well, let's, um, let's plug some other people that well, we like. Shout out to Michael Stevens, my friend who made our theme song for this podcast, which we play hey. in the intro, but yeah, not the outro. Nope, that was just the first episode. <laughs> did I do it on the first? episode? I think you did it know. on the first Ugh. one. I've never listened maybe. to a complete episode. <laughs> Haley, <laughs> shame on you. <laughs> I just need to skim it to hear what we talk about, and then... I'm listening to see what my bad habits are with talking. I've got a lot, and so every episode I'm like, I'm not going to do that. You know, I'll be better, but I never am. <laughs> I don't care. Yeah, I'm just going to do whatever. That's the right attitude to have. Yeah. I'm trying to get better, so I'm... Trying to get worse. Yeah. <laughs> well, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm the worst today. Today? Today? <laughs> Words. See, I'm going to get worse at English. You're not even drinking. You have no excuse. Uh, I got... Oh, you drank I mean, yesterday. I drank yesterday. Are you hungover or no? No, I'm not. Because you didn't drink a lot. I mean, I didn't drink a lot, but... You have self-control. Yeah, I've never... What's that like? I have no like, idea. Hungover. Hungover. Haley, tell us what self-control is like. I think um, if I got if I got hangovers, I would drink less. But I never get them. I get them every single time. Yeah. Mm, gross. Interesting. Because I'm. My dad never gets hangovers. My dad doesn't, but I don't think he's ever sober. So. Oh, there you go. Just, a, just like that's the trick. Yeah. Just, just a constant just, cycle. Just constantly oh, being boy. drunk. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great time. <laughs> Sounds like a good time. He's here for a good time, not a long time. <laughs> oh, for real. <laughs> I always say I'm here for a good time, not a long time, but I'm not really having a good time. <laughs> and you're not doing anything to shorten your life expectancy either, so. Um, like, I mean, I. You might live a long and terrible life. <laughs> yeah, but I'm also, like, not trying not to die. Like, just riding in the car with me, I think that becomes apparent. You know? I don't think I'm doing much for my general health, like. Yeah, I still drink too much caffeine. I don't take my vitamins. My back is so bad still. I bought a back brace. <laughs> I injured what? my I injured my back on the day of recording this podcast a couple weeks ago, and so we had to like cancel two mm-hmm. weeks in a row because I was yeah. so out of commission. And it's like not getting better. <laughs> Go to a doctor. I've been to a doctor. Oh. They were like. All we can do is give you muscle relaxers and Dope. tell you to do some yoga. And I was like, bitch, I already do yoga. And they're like, sorry. You're not doing enough yoga. So I bought a back brace and I wear it and everybody's like, they think it's really funny. Do they? It's kind of funny. I mean, uh, I'm fucking 24 and they're like, it's all downhill from here, Emily. <sighs> I'm not that old. I thought old. it was downhill from 25. I know. Or I, this 30. Is, this is too soon, dude. It's too soon. Maybe that means you have less time. <laughs> That's sad. Don't die. How dare you? I'm just saying. Haley's over here like shortening my life. I'm trying to shorten mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can take my back problems. Uh, no, thanks. <laughs> For real. It's the worst. It's a bummer. Okay. Uh, and then shout out to oh, <laughs> back, on, more? back on track. Uh, shout out to my friend Augie who goes to art school with me and she did our podcast logo we love it it's It's great so professional yeah we could have never made a logo no i can't even draw i don't know you you can't really draw i saw that drawing that you did of that weird pokemon thing i can draw when i put an effort (laughs) (laughs) you guys know i go to art school and i've taken like tons of art classes right but you're sewing all the time I can. It's like a. I can draw and I can what paint. What is it? A puff. <laughs> Some kind of like jigglypuff chinchilla like a, yeah. mix. <laughs> I swear I can draw, but I have no proof, so. No. It's okay. I'll take your word for it. 
What if I'm terrible? I'm just lying. I would I believe we, that. That's kind of what we're saying. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. You guys are assholes. That's what we're saying right now. Are you going to quit? I'm leaving. I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm taking this alcohol with me and I'm leaving. Bye. You can do this just by yourself. Yeah, I'll just, I'll become like a meditation podcast and I'll just say things. I'll just talk. I'll Are talk those the ones where they sleep. just talk at you? But like, ASMR? A, I think it's AS. ASMRC? A- I don't know what it I don't is. Know. ASMR? I don't I'll just do like a stream of consciousness where I just talk. Have you listened to Haley? What? Um, fucking Jeff Bridges does sleep tapes. <gasps> You know, no. you know what sleep tapes are, right? Where they, they they help you fall asleep. Yeah, they're really relaxing. Have you never heard that? He made I, one. He made one. Where can yeah. I get it? The internet. Look it up. It's incredible. Is it on YouTube? It's just a bunch of different. Can I buy it on Amazon? It's a bunch of different like songs or uh, videos or whatever, like clips of him, uh, just like talking. But it's very relaxing, and I I bet he has a very like interesting voice. Yeah, and everything he talks about is like super weird. <gasps> I have listened to all of all of them, yeah. Do you have a favorite? I, it's been a long time, but some of them are super weird. I'll listen to them tonight. Listen to them I and you'll be like, this asleep. is fucking strange. Where it like, keeps you up instead of puts you to sleep. Oh, I listened to them. When I first listened to them, it was in the middle of the night. And I was like, what the <laughs> fuck is this? I couldn't go to bed until I listened to the whole thing. Oh my gosh. Oh. So it, it didn't work? No. It was the opposite. I was amazed. You have to listen to I it. I will. Oh my gosh. It was, like, made for you. That is amazing. I'll, okay. I'll check it out. That'll let you know what I think. Oh. Listen to it. I'll well, make my own sleep tapes. Listen to it tonight when you're trying to sleep, and then I just will. text me, like, 2 a.m. You know what I did the other night? What? This is... I can't believe I'm, like, going to admit this, that I fell asleep listening to Hey Ya on repeat. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how it happened. <laughs> did you wake up and it was still playing? Yeah, it was still playing, and I was like... Oh, I guess I was feeling all right, all right, all right. I don't know. <laughs> Haley, uh, what's cooler than being cool? Ice cold. <laughs> Correct. Oh, <laughs> uh, just the best song. It's so oh, good. God. You know what I listened to recently? No. What? All Star by Smash Mouth. No. Oh, Anthony and I were driving somewhere and we started playing it and we just like blasted it we were like screaming the lyrics because everyone knows every single word whether they to want that. to or not they know every single it's word it's ingrained in you like Ugh. since childhood since we all saw shrek in the theater <laughs> yeah that movie that soundtrack goes so hard for it, no reason yeah it, it does none of the other shreks can compare no i love like children's movies soundtracks that are like fucking phenomenal and they don't need to be yeah like trolls trolls is good i'm thinking uh, smurfs have you seen a spirit wait no what's the, the horse what's movie the one uh no spirits stallion of the cimarron I, I stay away from horse no movies. you haven't seen that no what's brian sing sing you seen that one okay hold on hold on brian adams did the whole soundtrack to spirit oh really every single song is brian adams like belting it out oh my gosh that sounds horrible oh my that god it's the kind best of amazing it's, though my dad owns the soundtrack it's like how phil collins did the soundtracks for yeah. tarzan and brother bear yeah like, dude that was way too much for me as a small child no no yeah you no. needed that did i it was instrumental and in- he'll be in my heart i get that but did i need that what disney movie has the best soundtrack of all time now, now this can be musicals as well Mm. Oh, good question. So it could either be a soundtrack or like a musical. It's got the best songs throughout the movie. Ugh, I, I really like... Ugh. All right. You guys are awful. Peter the Pan. answer is... The answer is... Alice in Wonderland. Jungle Book. Jungle Book. Jungle Book, yeah. yeah. The answer is Jungle Book. Mary Poppins has some bops, too. Fuck yeah. <laughs> it does. It slaps. They got some bangers in Mary Poppins. <laughs> yeah. Spoonful of sugar. <laughs> Going hard to that. I hope yeah. we should see if there's like a remix to it. Can you look that Garrett, up? Garrett, like a look rave it remix. Yeah. We'll play it at a rave. Like EDM remix yeah. to Spoonful of Sugar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give you guys the fucking soundtrack. 
to, to, to spirit. It's okay. so goddamn good. Oh, jeez. I don't know. Anyone who has we're seen this. We're definitely going to have to listen to this as yes. soon as we're oh. done recording here. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Got to save that town. Incredible. Yeah, there's several remixes for a Spoonful oh, of, of Sugar. Yeah. Sure remixes I, for everything. I told you, it goes hard. <laughs> Apparently, you're not the only one who thinks this. <laughs> That's slightly comforting, though. I don't know. Do it's you ever comforting just have, and concerning. Do you just have weird thoughts, and then you're just like, oh, I should never tell anyone. <laughs> do, you ever just come like, up, do you ever come up with weird hypothetical scenarios, and then you ask people, and they're like, what the fuck? Why would I ever? Or just, like, weird jokes? Well, I'm always thinking of weird scenarios. Like, y- if you ever, like, okay, my friend and I were just talking about this. We walked by this, like, puddle. It was, like, filthy, and it was full of, like, cigarette butts and shit. And he was like, how much money, like, would you need to be paid to drink out of that? You know? Ugh. And, like, I'll, yeah. I'll ask people this shit, and they'll be yeah. like, why would I no, ever? I get that. And I'm like, just give me an answer. Yeah. I do that with my mom all the time. Or, like, I'll ask her weird questions. I'm like, if you, like, had to be a fugitive and live somewhere, where would you yeah, go? Yeah. And, like, what would your job be? And she's like... I don't know. Do you have an answer? I'm like, yeah. Of, of course I've got okay. prepared. I'm, I'm curious. Iceland sheep herder. Fuck yeah. Huh. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Not like Tahiti. Like a- no, no. Iceland no. is my number one travel destination Iceland. that I answered like, on, on that the sheet? questionnaire. Is it on the questionnaire Oh, did you? you I put that on there. You know what I put? Your mom? I put your mom's house. You <laughs> can suck a dick, <laughs> Haley. <laughs> I try to do one nice thing for this podcast. I, I answered half of them seriously, and the other half I didn't know the answers to. I just wrote your mom. Yeah, I know. That's who I am as a person. Why are you like this? You know, I don't know. I ask myself that every day. Have you heard that that story about? Um, I think it's like the, the turtle and the scorpion, or whatever. You know, it's like no. the, the scorpion cannot. Scorpion and the frog. Scorpion oh, and the frog. Yeah. It's in my nature. And yeah, the moral is like. The scorpion can't change his ways. He's always going to sting the frog. It's in his nature. What if it was about the band, the scorpions? I think it's the frog gives him, like, they both need to get across the river. Uh-huh. And the scorpion's like... Are you saying I'm the scorpion? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. so the scorpion's like, give me a ride. I promise I won't sting you. And the frog's like, okay, fine. Like, I mean, if you sting me, we're both going to die. So I guess we'll do it. And the halfway across, the scorpion stings him. And he's like, why the fuck would you do that? Like, we're both going to die now. And he's yeah, like, bitch. I can't change. That's who I am. Oh, okay. So anytime I do something and Anthony's like, why are you like this? I'm like, the scorpion. <laughs> I need to tell that story to my mom. So next time, like, hey, I thought of a weird joke. Do you want to hear it? <laughs> all, I, I say it all the time. And sometimes it's stuff where he's like, you actively chose this. You could definitely change. Just stop using that as an excuse. <laughs> but it's my excuse for everything. That's such, you can't argue with, like, folktale logic. He's like, that's not your nature that's a, a decision you're actively making but it could be in your nature to make that decision <laughs> that's true so he doesn't know man we're come on like we can't change i no. i i don't know if i want to though. it involves too much work we're way too lazy <sighs> true yeah yeah so now that we've established that we're trash yeah <laughs> Let's dive into mystery number two. Well, just remember, it's trash canned, not trash can't. Oh, motivational. There we go. Put that on a t-shirt. We'll make a meme out of it later. Fuck yeah. I'll cross-stitch it. I'm sure that's already a meme, so we'll find it. We'll post it. It definitely is. Yeah. Type that in. Trash can, not trash trash can't. can't. See? Trash cannot. Mm -hmm. Of course this is already a meme. (laughs) Or we can buy trash cans. Oh, it's Oscar oh, the Grouch. It's Oscar. We're on a first name basis with him. Yeah. Oscar the Grouch and Oscar Isaac. Yeah, but Oscar the Grouch is like, uh, I relate. You mm-hmm. know, he's salty. He lives in a trash can. Yeah. He used to be orange. Did he really? You used to be they, orange. Did they change his color? They just got dirty. Oh. oh. He has a unibrow. You don't have a unibrow. No, I don't have a lot of body hair. <laughs> Even if I stopped, like, <laughs> plucking my eyebrows, uh, I wouldn't get a unibrow. Oh, oh, weird. Gross. He used to be orange. Continuity. Huh. When was this, like, the 90s, 80s? Late 80s? Uh, early 80s? Maybe 70s? Oh I have no God. idea. Oh, my God. Oscar the Grouch used to be orange. Fucking mind blown. I, yeah. Okay. That's weird. 
course you brought up Oscar Isaac. He's your... He's my boy. He's the love of your life. and Take Away TV. I just rewatched Star Wars, The Last Jedi. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Him and... Him and... Uh, <laughs> see, English is not happening. I was going to say him, and then I was like, no, that's not proper grammar. But, like, the fact that he's in it so much is the best part of that movie. Uh, you know I'm in love with Adam Driver, but... Are you? <laughs> yeah hmm, yes. really <laughs> everyone thinks he looks like a monster i'm like yeah he's he does. so fucking hot but uh oscar isaac is also like he's the best close second he's the best he's your number one he's my boy is he who's number one for you oscar or diego oscar oscar yeah okay i can't no argue. contest no have you seen you've seen ex machina haven't you of course i haven't seen it it's so good you is need to Oscar watch it beautiful in it he has like the shaved head and then he has like this big beard oh. but there's this dance scene to get down saturday night which everyone says is like the best it's scene so good of all it's time. so good it's you need to watch it oh. it's so good someone i'm friends with just posted it and oh. she was like but for real isn't this the greatest cinematic scene of all time it's so good because like him and then uh donald gleason who plays uh hux in star wars yeah yeah is in it and so like they're doing because you know like they're testing artificial intelligence and like oscar's really mean to like the ai that they're testing are they trying to get it to dance no they have like the greatest line though because she drew his picture and oscar tore it up and so donald's character is like you tore for picture and he's like i'm gonna tear up the fucking dance floor dude which is the <gasps> best line no it's so good and he does oh, too he does it's mm. so good i love a good disco non sequitur oh, god um Ex him Machina, and Napoleon Dynamite, great dance scene as well. At the end, Inside Lewin Davis, <gasps> love that movie. Oh my oh, god, I saw it a good movie years ago, and then it, when I met you, I was like, Haley would love this movie. Yeah, no, I've seen it. It's so, it's so good. It's Oscar Isaac and a cat traveling around the country playing like blues, and he has like the curly music. hair and the beard and like. Oh folksy blues music yes. he's basically like fucking bob dylan pretty much yeah he's well, playing bob, bob dylan. dylan at like the end of the movie remember i can't they, the club after he comes back from chicago wherever he went and it's literally bob dylan yeah right? and it's bob dylan yeah because yeah, you can see like the harmonica and like yeah it's just like a brief glimpse and then he gets beat oh up. the soundtrack to that movie i have it it's so good it's bananas it's great well, and especially since he and Adam Driver sing a song about not wanting to go into space. Oh my and fucking this is like, god. Did you see all of the um, the memes that came out after the photo of him that Annie Leibovitz did with like the X-Wing where it's like him and the cat in the X-Wing? <laughs> I'll send it to you. Send me and every like single one of those. Inside Poe Dameron. Oh! I'll send it to you. It's so good. <gasps> Little baby Poe. There's so many. And there's even one where it's like he's posing. And it's like Poe uh, is posing. Finn, and he's like, "Are you posing?" And he's like, "Google Jaku, always taking pics." <laughs> Get out! No, I have so many Force send Awakens me, memes. Send I'll me send fucking you all, of them. all the Star Wars memes. They're the best. You I'm, need to see Annihilation because yes, Oscar I Isaac know. is in it. Yeah, I know. I need to see it. I need. Yeah. I've seen not being like facetious. I've seen basically everything he's been in except for Annihilation. I've seen quite a few movies with Adam Driver, and I didn't realize it until... Until, like, you knew yeah. who he was. Yeah. Yeah. He's in a lot of good stuff. He, I think he can act, and so can Oscar Isaac. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Oscar is great. <laughs> <laughs> You're you not know, biased at all. Um, I mean, Adam's okay. He was on Girls, though. Which I haven't seen, because why would I One of my fucking? friends just watched it for Adam, and she's like, don't watch it. It's awful. I mean, you have to sit through a lot of Lena Dunham to get to Adam yeah. Driver. You know, is she the worst person on earth? Okay. She is. You know who else Thank I adore? God. Riz Ahmed. Oh. He was in one episode of Girls, and I suffered through so much Lena Dunham for him. He's in Nightcrawler. He's You've seen so that, right? so good, yes. He, yeah. But that movie is phenomenal. So good. We're just talking about guys we love in movies now. Yeah. You know who else I love? <laughs> who? Taiko Waititi. <gasps> He is your bae. He is a fashion icon. He wears like floral rompers, pineapple rompers. He's he he just wears whatever stars he wants. in comedies. He directs movies. He now. writes his own movies. He directs oh his own movies. He is a renaissance man. He's the best. He has a great accent. Is he from New Zealand? New Zealand? Yeah, because yeah. that's where they made the things we do in the shadows. Right, what we do in the shadows. Yeah. Yep. 
if have you guys seen? haven't seen that it's like oh, a it's so good it's, it's a mockumentary vampire film vampires living in new zealand it's the They're flatting funniest together. shit i've ever seen it's so good there's so many good lines in that movie i need to finish it it's really good werewolves not swearwolves yes. <laughs> or um i go for a look i call dead but delicious <laughs> I like that all three of the main vampires are like just chill normal dudes and then you've got fucking Peter who's like I love Peter like the Nosferatu looking yeah. motherfucker oh, in the basement. He's the best. He's like in a coffin, he's just like <laughs> hissing. Yeah. Oh, that movie's so good. Or like when they're they can't see their like own reflection in the mirror, so they're drawing each other <laughs> just so they can see what they look like. Oh, well, I think we're due for a rewatch, honestly. Oh, yes the best okay for real though mystery two oh, before this okay. is like eight hours Too long. long yeah oh god okay uh i should have come up with a better title since you did like lighthouse of yeah Death. i put in the work it's okay <laughs> oh we'll it get- wasn't that hard to come up with my brain works fairly quickly sometimes <laughs> <laughs> too fast it's also not that clever so don't give yourself mm, that much credit no, it isn't exactly see uh, we've got to take you down a peg I'm definitely quantity over quality. You know, I come up with a lot of bad ideas, but inevitably clever, some of them will be they're good. Not great. The more you come up with, exactly. Yeah, to get through all the bad ideas to get some good ones. You know what? Yeah, I think you're onto something. Thank you. Yeah, I think you're gonna like the title of my next one. But let's go to yours. Okay, you have to read. Well, mine's straightforward. Mine is called the Oregon Vortex and the House of Mystery. Ooh. Ooh. you could have called it house of a thousand mysteries <laughs> oh god i really could have oh th- missed opportunity Haley's over here killing it okay uh so this is both a tourist attraction and a uh, supposed phenomenon that happens Ooh. in oregon okay so it's located in southern oregon midway between medford and grants pass um it's it's like a there's a there's a bunch of big signs for it and so if you're driving towards it you'll see all the signs it'll direct you off the road yeah don't worry there's billboards everywhere yeah i mean you'll fucking find it you're in the middle of nowhere it's literally the middle of nowhere it kind of looks like it from these photos um so basically the house of mystery is like this crooked house on the side of the road and so that's the main attraction that you can like actually visit Um, And then the Oregon Vortex is the name they've given to the phenomenon that happens in that surrounding area. So I'll I'll describe what that is. So there's a there's like an official website for the Oregon Vortex. And that's where I got some of this info. So I'm just going to read it like word for word because this is how they describe it. It's the most dramatic shit I've ever heard. (laughs) Yay. I love it already. I know. Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm like whoever wrote this. Give them all the awards. Oh, I want to marry them. Okay. This is how the website describes it. The Oregon Vortex is a glimpse of a strange world where the improbable is the commonplace and everyday physical facts are reversed. It is an area of naturally occurring visual and perceptual phenomena, which can be captured on film. No matter your education or profession, you will find a challenge to all your accepted theories. (laughs) That almost sounds like the opening for a Twilight Zone episode. It's literally like this area is a, a Twilight Zone episode. They're so extra. That's the best. Oh, it's so fucking oh dramatic. My gosh. So they they talk a little bit about what a vortex is, which is basically just like a spherical field of force. They say it's half above ground and half below ground. I don't know if that's true. <laughs> I've never heard that shit. I a vortex is just like a like a swirling whirlpool the force you know yeah i know what a vortex is yeah but they say that this area the whole surrounding area is like some kind of weird uh, vortex of like swirling force um that like kind of pulls in one direction so things change depending on where you go in the vortex if you go like more north Mm -hmm. or more south it's like pulling you towards the magnetic north interesting yeah it's very strange okay Let's see. I mean, their description is just... (laughs) You can't really top that. I don't even know what to read because it's so unbelievable. (laughs) 
this is what they this is what they claim happens in the vortex uh nowhere in the circle do you normally stand erect inevitably the visitor as- visitor assumes a posture that inclines toward the magnetic north um so it's like you're always kind of like drawn more towards that direction and if you're standing closer to it then you appear like taller even if you're not really taller you know what i mean so they they have all these things there where they'll put people they have like this board and they'll put people on it and they'll have them stand across from each other and then measure the difference between them and then reverse and do it again and there's always a difference which is fucking weird so this is like what they claim do you believe it i don't know you're not sold not yet it's part of like the tourist trap so if you go to this house they have like guides there who work there and they'll like demo all this shit for you and there's always like crowds of people who are like testing it out uh they really (laughs) sounds like a scam the the reviews are phenomenal like they really, really they sell it they're enthusiastic better than that portland shanghai tunnel tour i guess this is like really fun to go to oh so we should probably go we should okay um so let's talk about the the house itself uh it it was originally some kind of an office and then later used as like tool storage and it was built by a mining company in 1904 so they it's a super old building and they built it just to be like you know storage or an office or what the fuck ever it's fucking Mm -hmm. tiny and then one side of it collapsed one side of the foundation and so now the house is tilted uh and so it's mysterious now it's the house of mystery (laughs) just because it's slanted that's it there's nothing else special about it no whatsoever (laughs) um okay so okay okay (laughs) i don't know what to talk about Uh, that's Uh, fine we'll get there okay the legend around this place goes back all the way to the time of the native americans it goes back before the house was even built so supposedly this entire area where the vortex is in like the natives wouldn't go in it they thought that it was like curse or it was unholy there they would like try to go into this area and then their horses would stop and turn around the horses refused to go in and the natives are like you know well if they don't if they won't go in we won't go in we trust them they because like that's good judgment but what about all the squirrels and rabbits that do go in i don't know the horses were cursed they're not very smart squirrels (laughs) they're gonna die (laughs) but the horses are smart and they wouldn't go in so the natives wouldn't either Mm -hmm. so this area becomes like referred to as forbidden ground uh and they kind of shunned it so they wouldn't go there for a long time um, it's mentioned on Supernatural, apparently. It's mentioned in, like, several different shows. They've, like, filmed stuff here. I think it was mentioned in the X-Files. X-Files. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, I mean, there's, like, quite a legend, and it's referenced a lot. And they've gone, a lot of shows have come here, um, like Fact or Fate and Ghost Adventures, and they've, mm-hmm. like, done their own experiments to see if they think it's really a phenomenon or if it's just hype probably both i mean it's definitely like a tourist trap so they're capitalizing on oh for sure yeah okay so the property was originally you know built by the mining company and then after the house collapsed they were like we don't fucking want it anymore uh then john lister who's a geologist mining engineer and a physicist he moves in and buys the property and develops the whole area in the 20s and then there's because of all the the weird like legends surrounding it and all of the public interest he opens it up to the public in 1930 so people can start like coming and doing tours and seeing an early scammer i like it yeah so literally i i know you haven't seen gravity falls but i saw that clip that you showed me i showed you a clip I feel like that's enough yeah gravity falls is like n- n- the uncle in the show the great uncle he opens this like road stand a roadside tourist trap that's like you know he's gluing like animal parts together to make yeah. like fake creatures Where's an eye patch for no reason yes yeah it's called the mystery shack and this is the real life version of that if you google oregon vortex you'll get pictures of the mystery shack really people have definitely compared the two this was probably the inspiration for that 
Yeah. It says right here that it was. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. And the, I mean, the sh- show takes place in Oregon. Gravity w- Falls. Wikipedia says it is. Wikipedia is always right. <laughs> I mean, I guess. We can't question it. It's usually right. Surprisingly, it is. I mean, I use a lot of stuff for this podcast. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> we shouldn't admit that. I mean, I do things other than Wikipedia, but that's like the first source. If there's a Wikipedia page for it, it's legit. I think they uh, put Wikipedia up against like encyclopedias, and it's just more accurate because it's current. Yeah, it's current because people are constantly adding to it. And critiquing it when when other people talk bullshit. Yeah. I think they're good about like monitoring it now so that there's not gibberish on there. There's not weird stuff. Did you, when you were younger, did you used to go in and put stupid shit on there yeah i did too <laughs> i don't the think those kind of people they don't let you do that anymore really mm, i don't think so <laughs> it happens sometimes still yeah but they they catch it and shit okay so this guy john lister thinks he's like a scientist <laughs> i don't know if he really is but he thinks he is so he buys his property and he starts doing like experiments on it to understand the phenomena and he writes like a book about it and everything Ooh. like He's hyping the shit out of this. Yeah. But I don't know if it's really a thing. Anyway, uh, he. these are some of the things they claim happen that prove that there's, like, a weird phenomena happening. They claim that uh, brooms will, like, stand on their own in the house. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's that spot where people's heights seem to change based on where they're standing, which the tour guide will do for you. They claim that, um, like, balls in the house will roll uphill. It's all kinds of things, and supposedly, like, it's all on video. Yeah. Mm. There's pictures of it, but let's talk about whether it's real or fake. So, the investigators from the sci-fi show Fact or Faked, Paranormal Files, oh. came in and did an investigation, and, and? this is what they found. Uh, they're led by former FBI criminal investigator Ben Hansen, and they brought in scientific equipment to measure, like, the angles of, like, the floor and that board people stand on Mm -hmm. to measure their heights. So they're, like, they're really testing all this shit. So this is what they determined. Brooms can very easily stand on their own in this house because of the angle of the house and, like, depending on what type of broom it is, like, the type of bristles that are... Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. So very easily that one's debunked yeah that's just like a normal thing okay uh the balls rolling uphill is an optical illusion it's it just looks that way because of like the Uh, angles in the house they're rolling downhill (laughs) no shit okay um and then as far as the height issue goes uh they so they measure that board that people stand on and they found there's like a 2% incline, but um, they had the dudes from the show stand on it mm-hmm. and switch places, and they took photos and videos of it yeah. for the show. When they went back and they measured the percentage difference between them, there's a 16% difference from one one side to the other when they yeah. switch, which is completely, they can't explain it. The boards are leaning, that's why. I'm telling you. No, no, no. They measure the boards. There's only like a 2% change. Mm, yeah. No. You said height difference. I'm talking about lean. Never mind. They, they think that it's weird. They couldn't explain it. So the FBI thinks it's weird. The <laughs> former FBI investigator <laughs> says it's weird. It's weird. It's unexplained. So there's your mystery. Uh, and then people say they get like dizzy in the house, but it's slanted. So, yeah, they think yeah. it's because of all the forced perspective that your brain is seeing optical illusions, which will give you yeah. a vertigo. Yeah. So a lot it of makes it's, sense. it makes total sense. Yeah. I get it. There's no mystery, but no. it's part of the fun. Yeah. Um, and then they, they also brought, um, they brought horses onto the property and tried to make them run away, get close to it. And they wouldn't, they wouldn't go near it. Horses know a good tourist trap when they see one. <laughs> they're smarter than we are. Yeah. They're like, don't waste your money. <laughs> we'll waste our money. Oh, for sure. Like me in any gift shop. I'm just throwing out all my money. <laughs> just making it rain. <laughs> Give me all that shit. Yeah. <laughs> all that junk I don't need. Give me all those shock glasses. 
hey man i'm using that one <laughs> you, you did use it <laughs> one time <laughs> okay they think that well it, the horses wouldn't go in there but also the their compasses they brought were really thrown off um and supposedly this is part of the phenomenon is it like it messes with the magnetic field but they think there could also be like strong magnets buried oh, in the ground that would make sense and then the people wouldn't let them like dig up the area to check which is fair like mm-hmm. you can't go digging up people's property but also could be they buried magnets. giant magnets yeah <laughs> scammers gonna scam mm. which could also uh, attribute to the vertigo yeah 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 so um i could be just like they're definitely trying to trick you yeah but i'm okay with it either way yeah i gotta respect a good scam yeah who doesn't i mean i know to do like to get away with something like that it's great because it's not harmful you know it's just for some fun honestly that's my making dream. some money yeah we'll come up with a good tourist trap yes this podcast this <laughs> this podcast is a trap yeah give us your money give us your emails <laughs> please <laughs> <laughs> that's basically it so it's just like the phenomena of the vortex and then interesting the house itself mm-hmm. i think it sounds fun uh, yeah i think we should go i don't care if it's fake or not i think it's cool yeah i love a good tourist trap oh, me too yeah you know, i've done enough road trips that good tourist trap it's the best well let's go to southern oregon and let's do it let's find it yeah I think it's, I think Medford is only like eight hours away. I don't know if they Six. have a gift Six? shop. See, I don't, I don't think they have a gift shop there because no, it's just okay. that tiny house. But if they did, I'd they buy something. They probably do somewhere. They probably have a, a shack set up, a building set up on the outside. Maybe. Probably. That'd be I've weird if they didn't. I've been past there because, you know, there's signs for Golden Hill. Yeah. It's right outside of a ghost town. That's how I found this. I was Ooh. looking up ghost towns, but then I found this and I thought it was cooler. We could do like two for one. Yeah. Two for ghost yeah. Town. Future episode. Ghost towns. We yeah. need to get into more ghost towns. Yeah. Uh, Golden Hill, I think is. Golden Hill, yeah. That's a ghost town. Yeah. Great. There's a lot around here. I feel like there's so many. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Great. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, really. Is that Oh, it? should we... What? Um, real quick, let's talk about how they caught the fucking golden state killer oh, yeah. such an exciting week ah. for true crime so i don't know anything about the golden state killer he was big is and this gonna be a give me a quick summary but maybe it's a future episode oh uh, i mean let's just talk about it because it happened but it's not a northwest thing yeah, it's, it's northern enough. california it's but enough. he like raped and killed women all over California in the 70s. I think it was maybe 60s, 70s. 60s and 70s. And they just never caught him. He he, hmm. he escaped. How many do you know off the top of your head? I no. don't know. Kill, I think killed 12 people, raped like 80, burglarized like 120 homes. Hmm. They called him the original Night Stalker. Because yeah. he, like, I think he was before Richard Ramirez. He was, Ramirez. yeah. Because yeah. I don't think Richard Ramirez started like killing until like 84 maybe. This guy was definitely like first. Yeah. And they never caught this guy. For the longest time. That's so crazy. Did they catch him on like his brother's 23 and me or something like that? That's the joke. But I, I think it's definitely like they caught him by some relative's DNA yeah. that was in. That's so crazy. On Did you see? I can't remember who posted it. It might have been my favorite murder. But like the photo of him at like a town hall meeting or something. Oh, he was at. Or what was it? Uh, Wild Wild Country. He was at a rajnishi he was meeting that's yeah. what it was yeah oh my god i don't know if he was in it or if he just yeah, went just to like went one to, like, meeting, meeting but he was fucking there he's right so, behind um that's crazy uh sheila that is crazy the main chick yeah he, in the photo he's like sitting right behind her yeah because i saw the photo but i didn't like read fully what it was unbelievable that dude that is so crazy and he that's why you always have to take a picture of a crowd Every single time. Every time you're in a crowd, take a photo. Oh, anybody who's going to join a cult is already suspect. Oh, for sure. And he Anyone later became like, a cop. Who's like, you know what? I just want to hear this guy out, you know? But, I mean, at the same time, I'd probably make... If I, like, ran into, like, a cult meeting, I'd be like, yeah, I want to check it out. I'd sit in on one. Yeah, because I'm curious. Well, and I'm sure that guy was curious, too, you know? Yeah. But just for different reasons. Yeah. 
for murder reasons. He was a sick motherfucker, and I am so psyched they caught him. How could he, like, live with himself for that long? Like, ugh. Look at what he did. I mean, he doesn't feel remorse. No. He's unfeeling. God. We definitely have to read I'll Be Gone in the Dark. We're going to start buddy reading after we finish Mindhunter. Yeah. I know um, when it was happening, did you see all the stuff where everybody's like, you know, Michelle McNamara uh, helped catch him. And the police mm-hmm. were like, we want to be really clear that, you know, this this was solved by police work. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yeah, that's true. But, but I've... T- cases didn't... like this get solved by people staying interested in them. Because yeah. this is like 40 years later. Yeah, and she was still, like, looking for clues. She was so dedicated, and that book is so popular now that I fully believe she like renewed interest in this case she definitely did with her true crime blog yeah yeah i think that she helped get it solved i mean she didn't solve it no but she was a big force in getting interest in the case again yeah i think she deserves credit and recognition yeah yeah did you see Patton oswalt i was the whole day he was like live tweeting and i was Was following all of his tweets and he he tweeted like you got him, Michelle. And I almost started crying. That's so sweet. He said when he first heard that they arrested the guy, he yeah. started sobbing. Oh, Yeah. That's so sweet. It's bittersweet because it's, it is. she was so dedicated to she catching was. this guy. Yeah. But she never got to see it happen. But in, in some way, she's responsible, too. So it's like... Yeah, that's so great. It's the dream. I mean, we're all, like, obsessed with true crime, and we would love to see these murders solved. Yeah, I just want to catch a serial killer and be instrumental in taking down a serial killer. I mean, this is one of those cases where there's so much DNA evidence, Mm -hmm. but it wasn't testable back at that time, and now it is. So they're just, like, having to go through all of it, and it takes time. So much. I know. (sighs) But our technology is there. I mean, we can solve these now. Mm -hmm. There's no excuse not to. Yeah, it's just is there the interest in doing it that's the thing because it takes time and tons of money so yeah. somebody has to and like make this happen the people to do it like can they have people to spare to do that yeah you have to put tons of people on this job mm-hmm. you have to pay for all that yeah no thanks but i also yes did you watch the press conference Mm-mm. that day no. i watched a lot of it yeah it was really touching. Like the, all of the police chiefs of Sacramento were there, and they were oh. like talking because they grew up. Yeah, right. With that case. Yeah. And yeah. So this lady gave a really good opening, and she was like, "I was a young girl when this was happening. We were all terrified." And so it's like so crazy that it was like so long ago. Yeah. And now he's caught. They're lucky that he was alive. What if he had been? Yeah. He like looks Zodiac. Zodiac's definitely dead. Well, well, this guy looks like he's close to death. I know. I wonder. Like, what sentence they're going to give him. That's the sad part, because no matter what they give him... It's not going to... If they give him life, he'll die in prison. If they give him the electric chair, he'll die before yeah. he even gets there, because it takes so long to make that happen. So many people die on death row. He'll die in prison regardless, but it's only yeah. going to be a couple years. Yeah. Maybe ten. Oh, ten max. If we're lucky. Yeah. What, a, what an asshole... I'm still glad he got caught, though. He didn't uh, die knowing he got away with it. I hope it's it's really him, you know? Yeah. They didn't arrest the wrong guy. But I hope it's him, and I hope they, when they, like, prosecute him, he actually gets charged. I hope he doesn't get off. No, why would he get off? But Because it, it's been so long. So, you know, it's hard to prove that shit. Murder is murder. And I don't, I don't know if they just have, like, that one piece of DNA evidence or what. They haven't... We don't know anything, I feel like they've convicted more for less, though. Oh, I true. mean, the justice system is kind of messed up sometimes. Okay, let's be real. The trial is coming up, and... I'm excited. Oh, we're gonna... We'll keep you guys updated. We'll be updating Instagram daily. We'll be on it. As, yeah. Because all that info is gonna come to light in the trial. I'm so excited. I love a good trial. I want to see everything they have against him. Yes, I know. Me too. Oh. Very exciting. Oh, I'll see you at there's Richard Ramirez. Oh, oh, little baby Richard. Yeah, creepy. What, what a fucking sicko. <laughs> what a fucking nerd. He's the worst. He is such a nerd. Oh, look, and there's Michelle. Yeah. And there's the Zodiac Killer. 
we're gonna read that book and yeah. i would recommend everybody else yeah. read it as well we'll update our instagram when we read it yeah we'll do thoughts we'll re- review it i think it's gonna be good to read it now that they've arrested the guy yeah because everything yeah. she talks about will make more sense you know yeah and what if you're reading it and everything they say about him you're like oh it's dead on with this yeah. dude he was a police officer <sighs> they always fucking are i know or they like inject themselves into the investigation you know somehow yeah or they're like ex-military mm-hmm. that's pretty common yeah what a loser all right well <laughs> on that note <laughs> dark but also we're psyched yeah <laughs> okay is that is that it i think that's it for this I think one that's it yeah Ready? tune in next week <laughs> bye stay spooky <laughs> <laughs>